What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Mind Something. If you're new here, my name is Jake and in today's video, we got a bunch of exciting news to cover. And before I get into it, do me a favor, hit that like and hit the subscribe if you haven't already. And without further ado, we're going to jump straight into the content because we got a lot of things to cover. So earlier today, I was watching Gamer Meld, and if you guys aren't familiar with this channel, uh, they co cover a lot of relevant information for us as miners, um, all the new GPU, CPU news, you name it. And he had some very interesting things to go over today that I wanted to share with you guys. The first of which was AMD lowers Ryzen 7000 CPU production plan due to PC market decline. Ryzen 9 7900X best selling AM5 chip. Well, yes, of course, the 7900X is going to be the best selling chip because anybody upgrading right now is probably the type of person that has to have the latest and greatest and the best. Uh, but, you know, for the entry level uh, new CPUs, upgrading is going to come at a bit of a steep price tag because the lowest you can find a B650 to support the new uh, CPUs is coming in at $160. I think the expectations were to come in somewhere around 125 which is still a considerable increase considering previous generation prices. But, you know, when we say that AMD is going to lower production due to PC market declines, yeah, I mean, the macroeconomic situation is affecting that for sure. But, you know, considering the price tag that some of these things are coming in at because of inflation, uh, yeah, it's really not any surprise to me, I guess I would say, um, but I am a little bit surprised to see them pull back production. So moving on to some more interesting news, uh, we have Intel possibly making AMD chips. Yes, you heard that correct. So Intel CEO says open to manufacturing AMD chips at their fabs aims to build the fastest CPUs, GPUs, and discrete GPUs in the world. Well, Intel has been coasting on their previous success for quite some time, but if you've been paying attention to my channel, you may have caught this video from yesterday uh, talking about Intel benefiting from a lot of federally funded grants to build new chip factories, one of which is going to be located in Ohio, which is what uh, CEO Gesslinger is talking about here. So uh, during the interview, Pat said that during the inauguration of the Ohio Fab, he sat down with a number of C CEOs from fabless companies and welcomed them and even offered to put their logo next to the Fab where their new products were made. Not only that, but Pat Gesslinger also said that he will be thrilled to put logos of their competitors, AMD and NVIDIA, at their fabs. So, you know, we don't have confirmation that anything is being made at this new facility right now. Uh, but again, if you go back to the previous video that I posted yesterday and you start to pay attention and you start to put the dots together, so to speak, uh, you could definitely see something like this happening in the future. So pay very close attention to this. This could be a very interesting development in the future. And then moving on, I wanted to talk to you guys about something that I saw on Radiance Discord. Uh, obviously, I have been talking with IE Doc, the developer for BZ Miner, quite a bit. And I learned several new things today that I wanted to share with you guys. Now, maybe I'm showing my ignorance. Maybe you're already aware of these things. Uh, but I find it very interesting. And again, I wanted to share that with you guys. So first thing that I want to share with you is some very, very incredible efficiency coming across on Radiant. Uh, let me scroll up here and see if I can find a screenshot for you guys. So... Uh, yeah, we're coming in at about 11.3 mega hash per watt. Uh, shout out to 306 Miner who shared this screenshot of his rig. 
And as you can see, we are using very, very low power on some of these GPUs. And efficiency is king right now, as you guys know. Let me share another screenshot that I found previously. Uh, let's see here. That's not the one. Uh, I gotta scroll up a little farther. Sorry guys, bear with me. Aha, here we go. So yeah, getting up to 13 mega hash per watt. And looks like this particular GPU is a 3070, so no surprise there. Using 53 watts, wow. Just absolutely incredible. Now I will show you guys how they're accomplishing this, but before I do, I just want to remind you, hit the like button and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. So, moving along here, uh, one thing that you're going to see is them basically sharing the ability to uh, lock memory, lock core, and use a core clock setting. So let me show you what I mean here real quickly. Just bear with me. Okay. All right. So over, excuse me, overclock, lock, memory, clock at 810. Overclock, core clock, offset at 250. And then overclock, lock, core clock. And then he's got each specific GPU at a different core clock setting. Now, when I saw this, I was like, wait, what, what's going on here? Why would you have a core clock setting and a locked core clock setting? And I said, so the first core command is just for GPU zero. And he said, no, uh, it's for all. And I was confused. I'm like, okay, that's what I thought. So why would you have that if he's running locked core? And he replies, that's the trick, lock the core will keep the core at the specific frequency. Then offsetting will adjust the voltage curve based on the offset frequency you specified. And 306 minor chimes in here, efficiency. So essentially what's going on here is an incredible amount of efficiency. I thought I had my overclocks locked in pretty well, but obviously I'm learning new things every day and I wanna share that with you guys. So. If you can give me some examples of seeing this out in the wild, I would love to see it. I'm gonna try it myself and let you guys know how it goes. And then also uh, some very interesting news coming out of BZ Miner again, and that is the ability to lock the memory on 10 series, 16 series, and 20 series. So previously, I thought it was only possible to lock the memory on the 30 series. But uh, with this new beta version coming out, which is 12.1.0b3, uh, you should be able to lock memory on 10, 16, and 20 series. So that could help tremendously on those particular cards in gaining efficiency if you're going to be mining something that's a core intensive algorithm like caspa or like radiant uh, and also i will leave a little link down here in the video so that you can figure out how to install the beta version in case you're like me and you just can't wait for hive os to update it all right so last story the reason that you guys probably clicked on the video is NVIDIA is supposedly lowering the price on which graphics card? Well, we know that they just unlaunched the 4080 12 gig and everybody is speculating that that card is now going to be a 3070. However, I'm going to make an argument for it being a 3070 Ti and if you look at our little chart here, there's a couple things that I want to show you. So first of all, you can see from a 3080 to a 3070 Ti, we're going to drop down in bus size, which is what you're going to see on the 4000 series. So uh, currently bus size coming in at 384 on the 4090 and 256 on the 4080. And we actually 256 and 192 
with the 4080-12 gig as opposed to the 16 gig. Uh, and then it shows the 4070 coming in at 192-bit bus or 160. Uh, this has a question mark because obviously these details have not been released yet. But it makes a lot more sense for them to turn the 4080 into a 4070 Ti based off of things like CUDA core counts and the memory bus size. So again, if we're dropping down to 192-bit bus uh, from a 4080 16 gig to a 4070 Ti, of course we would have a smaller bus size, right? And then again, when you look at the core count here as well, um, it initially having 9,728 CUDA cores, and then coming in at 7,680 for the 12 gigabyte doesn't make a whole lot of sense when a 4070 was already speculated to have that 7,680. So of course, why wouldn't they turn this into a 4070 Ti and then go down to the 7,168 for the 4070? So when it comes to them dropping the price, uh, again, going back to GamerMeld's video, uh, apparently, uh, let me fast forward here just for a moment. I think he was talking about something that Gamer Nexus, yeah, it was Gamer Nexus that was mentioning that they were talking to NVIDIA's board partners, a couple of them, and they were getting lots of juicy details. Uh, mainly those details were around uh, reboxing uh, or getting rid of the old boxes, having to destroy them or ship them back for reprinting. Uh, but apparently those uh, particular partners are sharing details about NVIDIA dropping the price. Now, what are they going to drop it to? Well, I'm just going to throw my opinion out there, guys. This is completely speculation. But to me, it makes total sense for them to come in at a price point of $799 possibly $699, but if they originally priced this GPU at $899, I just don't see them going down all the way to $699. So my expectation is going to come in somewhere between $699 and $799, and I think we're most likely looking at a 4070 Ti. So I guess time will tell. We'll just have to wait and see. But that's all I got for you guys today. So again, hit that like button, hit the subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode.